Oh my God, this album is so bad, I started sweating. <laughs> if you don't think that's Drake's worst ever performance, you probably need to clean your ears out. If I had to pick one word to describe Honestly Nevermind, it would be confusing. Honestly Nevermind is a minimal, nearly one hour long dance album that stands alone as by far the most unique record Drake has ever made when compared to the rest of his discography. But is it good enough to last? Is he exploring new sides of his creativity or continuing the trend of boring, lazy musical output? Hey. Right after the 30 second Blade Runner ambiance intro ends and Falling Back begins, it was immediately clear that this album is not an attempt to one up or improve on the complaints people had about Certified Lover Boy. This is something else entirely. Falling Back has a pretty beautiful instrumental. It kind of just starts in the middle of this dreamy beat with misty percussion and layered synths, just synths stacked on top of synths in the way that reminds me of something I'd hear in a YouTube dreamy lo fi house music to study to playlist or something like that I would put on to edit to in the background. Truthfully, it's a beautifully produced track. It feels very chill and comforting, at least every part except Drake's vocals. Even on the first song alone, I was already flabbergasted at Drake's poor, strained delivery and the way his autotune is way too harsh and noticeable for an instrumental this simple. Just off of the instrumental alone, I would be more than happy to hear this track in a YouTube playlist I have on in the background, but like I said, Drake's performance is shockingly uninspired. The lyrics are so shallow and boring and his tone just feels more apathetic than anything else. He doesn't flow with instrumental at all, and I legit feel like I would have had a better time listening to the beat by itself without any vocals. And I'm sad to say that tracks three and four are pretty much the same story. Besides the Jersey Club inspired sample sounds in track four that's ridiculous in a good way, these songs don't draw any emotion out of me at all. I'm just sitting there lifeless, and I think the first third of this record is a huge dud. Track five, A Keeper, has this really beautiful, sentimental sounding piano melody at the beginning. And I love the muted sound of the drums throughout the track before the instrumental bursts into a crescendo at the end. But Drake's performance, again, just sounds so lame. Like he's singing at 50% capacity. The lyrics are completely indistinguishable from one song to the next as he just repeats these vague woman themed statements that I can't remember five seconds after they're over. I'm counting the days till you come. Track six, Calling My Name is just a fucking abomination. Two minutes long, Drake dragging out his most sickeningly sweet vocal delivery, doing his very, very best Justin Bieber impression before launching into this ghostly, tinny sounding chorus where he's repeating over and over, your pussy is calling my name on top of the most generic sounding beat yet in a long line of pretty generic sounding beats. Home and hanging on my neck. The bracelet matches a set. And for some reason, it took seven tracks for Drake to come up with a single good lyric. But Sticky is by far my favorite song on the record to this point. I don't know why he waited until half the record was over to say anything interesting, or just not even interesting, but not bad enough to skip. And was it worth the half hour wait through some of the worst songs of his career to get to this point? No, it wasn't. But that's why you're watching this review and not listening to the album itself. I don't know, Sticky, uh, the rapping over the house beat works a lot better than the shitty little half-assed singing he's been doing so far. The beat kind of sounds like it has a Shiloh Dynasty sample. It, it's pretty good, but if I had a piece of paper with notes on it, I'd probably throw it at the wall right now. The fact that it took seven tracks to get a solidly good one just ruins the fact that this one was good. I I'll put it on some playlists. It's pretty good, especially towards the end of the song where the drums pick up and Drake kind of increases his energy with the bars. This is one of his better songs lately, and I would probably say it's better than most of the tracks off of Certified Lover Boy last year. I do like the house sound mixed with the rapping, but it's just such a disappointment that it took this long to get to a song that I actually want to hear. Can't feel this void between us. Uh, track eight, Massive. Massive is probably the most effective house and singing track so far. It has this kind of strange, empty sci-fi sound to it that feels pretty effective with Drake's vocals for the first time. And I think this track really served as a reminder to me that I have enjoyed the instrumentals to this point. And I do think there are some cool moments on the record, but at the same time, it just kind of feels shoehorned. At no point do Drake's vocals on this album feel genuine, like he's putting on these vague facades of emotion that are mismatched against the production. The entire package feels out of place. But out of everything so far, Massive is one of the better songs, and one of the few I could say is an all-around solid track. 
Flights Booked has this sorrowful, haunting vocal sample in the intro that sets a unique tone until Drake comes in with his really tinny, shallow mixing and just says words. He's not singing or rapping, he's just talking softly into the mic in a way that doesn't convey any particular feeling at all. And while Overdrive starts off slow, I really like the second half of the track where Drake finds a much more engaging vocal groove and kind of rides this punchy bass line before a guitar solo outro. It's corny and it kind of sucks, but it feels much more engaged and purposeful and more intentional than most of the songs so far. But at the same time, again, it's hard to get excited for something that already should have happened the whole way through. Downhill, Tie That Binds, and Liability, these are kind of the closing tracks, and they're all songs that have interesting sounds but suffer from overall blandness. Tie That Binds has this textureless, groaning, boring guitar solo that just feels corporate and empty while Liability sounds like an overly compressed YouTube slowed in reverb mix. Drake is doing this pitched down, emotionally tortured, distressed affectation over another boring beat. I don't understand how he thought this was gonna work, but it sounds like shit. Pigeonhole, I'm a night out, it's a different mode. Jimmy Cooks is the one trap banger, the big outro, the grand finale with a 21 Savage feature. It's Knife Talk part two, but ultimately it's not even as good as Knife Talk. Yeah, 21 Savage did his best and came with some great energy, but this is the only rap song on the entire album. Did he think this was gonna make up for the fact he dropped an album full of the most uninspired writing and singing of his entire career? Because it doesn't. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure how I should feel about this album. On one hand, I absolutely hate it. It's bad on two levels. It's a bad Drake album and it's a bad house album. All of the money that went into this record from one of the best selling artists alive with infinite resources available to him. And I would genuinely rather just go on YouTube and listen to Dream Sounds Minimal Lo-Fi House Mix number 44 that has 40,000 views. There is more spirit and character in the melodies off these random playlists on YouTube full of artists I've never heard of before. So much more instrumentation and atmosphere and texture with these little twinkling piano melodies, cowbells, shimmering leads evoking feelings of night life in big cities and then you turn on this drake album and it's just this flat empty mess with drake fucking moaning on top of it throughout honestly never mind you can hear these vague stabs at the nightlife nocturnal club aesthetic that house music is known for but it's mixed overly loud there's so much empty space where there could be you know detailed colorful texture there just isn't much going on in the music let alone with drake's empty vocals and yeah house isn't the most mainstream genre these days especially in the hip-hop fan base but there is a lot of interesting house music that I think deserves more attention. House is a genre that has the power to create hauntingly beautiful soundscapes and draw from all sorts of influences and evoke powerful emotions from the listener. And yeah, maybe some people are going to say, oh damn, Drake is making H&M background music now. But house music can be beautiful if you do it right. You have Jamie XX's In Color, this insanely melancholic album full of sharp, sleek, futuristic sounds. You have Untrue by Burial, a dark industrial record with a timeless atmosphere of quiet and solid. Solitude. Ross from Friends is another great contemporary house producer that makes ethereal, dreamy music. And Daft Punk's Homework is a masterpiece that brought international attention to house music in the late 90s with insanely catchy grooves and a harsh sci-fi style. House is a genre with a long and interesting history. It comes from black artists in early 1980s Chicago, and it traveled literally all around the world, from New York to London to Western Europe and back. And you know what? Drake is known for trying different styles. Pop music, soul, R&B, dance hall, Drill. He always tries new things and it usually works. People clown him, but the songs are still pretty catchy. But it just hurts to see Drake decide to make a house album and for it to be this generic, this empty and flat when there's so much beauty in the genre that a lot of listeners today don't even know about. And that's not even to mention the way this album is made. Listen to some old classic house music, some of the real stuff from the 90s, and it just sounds so much more lifelike and energetic and stylized. And the music goes places. It has this depth and a destination you're on this little journey through the futuristic 90s soundscapes. It makes Drake's take on House that much more boring. Even the mixing on Honestly Nevermind is disappointing. With everything sounding so muddy and Drake's vocals having an almost tinny sound all through the record, it makes everything feel so messy and just ruins the whole idea of minimal instrumentals. What's the point of all that experimentation when you can't even hear it? I would rather just listen to some other music. Look, I like experimentation. I like artists trying new things. But as a House album, Honestly Nevermind is bad. Not because it doesn't fit a predetermined mold, but because it doesn't even try. So it's a bad example of what house music can be. 
But is it a good Drake album? I don't even know because he hasn't made a good album in five years, but people keep buying whatever he puts out. Whether he's putting out something mildly boring like Scorpion or an album that's genuinely insultingly bad like this, he hasn't put out a good record in about five years. And yeah, there are lots of people comparing this album to some of the songs off of More Life from 2017. Whether it's Passion Fruit or Blem or whatever, but that comparison just makes me sad because of how severely disappointing Drake's vocal performances and mixing are on this record compared to More Life, which was a pretty good project. It's just not even a comparison. This album sounds rushed. He sounds apathetic and uninvolved. The songs on More Life are actually so much more interesting than anything on here. I do like the idea of this album. It's like an ambient album for nightclubs, and I think it'd be really cool if it ended up being a good project and having an impact on pop culture. I love house music. Making house music more popular, that's a good thing. The only problem now is that a ton of people are going to have their first exposure to house music be an absolutely lazy album. In all, Drake and his producers failed to capture any characteristics of what makes house interesting, and his vocals are just the icing on the shitty cake. While I do think it's cool that Drake would go for a completely new sound and try something like this, his execution couldn't have been worse. Whether it's the terrible mixing, the awful vocals, the uninspiring songwriting, or the mostly bland beats, this is a 14-track dance album that doesn't make me want to dance at all. It's by far Drake's worst album yet, and at this point, I'm just giving up on the idea that he'll ever make good projects again. For me, Honestly Nevermind is a solid 3 out of 10. There is no artistic effort here, there are no creative risks, it's like an imitation of a good record. A couple good songs, I guess you can have the rest. Anyway, I'm Philip. This has been Volksgeist. Thank you for watching.